the year 1912 and Titanic was made the biggest man-made marvel an epitome of luxury and this monster of a ship sank and that too on its maiden voyage how could this happen uh, what I read was it hit an iceberg it hit an iceberg firstly it was traveling with a very high speed and second it hit an iceberg what I heard it hit an iceberg if the Titanic would have hit the iceberg directly it might not have sunk the speed of Titanic when it just reached the iceberg was less than five knots a head-on collision might have just saved the Titanic Technology was poor and the safety systems were taken for granted. Let's try to pictureize. Minus 2 degrees Celsius, night time, poor visibility, and there would be a lookout standing right where I'm standing, searching for icebergs. And even if he saw the iceberg, what he would do is he would ring that bell over there to alert the crew. Now the sound of the bell would be heard by the captain's crew and the captain's crew would immediately inform the engine room to shut down the engine. The engineer would shut down the engine. But shutting down such a huge engine is not as easy as applying brakes to a car. It takes time. And this is what happened. Now just shutting down the engine is not enough to stop the ship. Because the ship has a huge amount of inertia. To stop the ship immediately, what has to be done is the engine has to be put in a reverse direction. And that is what was done. Let us look at all the events that actually happened and why Titanic could not be saved. Step 1. The lookout sights the iceberg and rings the bell. The step 2 that happened was the crew heard the sound of the bell and informed the engine room. The engine room shuts down the engine which takes a lot of time. Now the engine is stopped and then it is put in a reverse direction. Now all this took a lot of time. And because of this, it was too late and Titanic went and hit the iceberg. Now this incident happened in 1912 and just after two years, physics came to the rescue and it gave a solution to the world and that was the discovery of the sonar system. So here we are discussing sonar system which is sound, navigation and ranging. Now this is a modern cruiser which is equipped with a sonar system. So let us see how a sonar system actually works. Now this technology makes use of ultrasound. Now ultrasound are sound waves having a frequency higher than 20,000 Hertz. So naturally, this sound waves will have a high penetrating power and that is what is used in a sonar system. Now sonar system consists of a transmitter and a receiver. Now the transmitter will transmit a sharp pulse of ultrasound which will travel downwards and this transmitted pulse will hit the seabed. After hitting the seabed, this transmitted pulse will get reflected and is received by the receiver. Now the receiver will note the time interval and this signals are converted into electrical signals which can be interpreted by the receiver. Now let us see how the depth of the seabed can be calculated by using the formula V is equal to 2D upon T. Now, the velocity of sound in seawater is already known to us, which is around 1500 meters per second. Now, the time interval, let us say, was noted as 2 seconds. So, by using this formula, the distance D can be found. So, distance D here would be 1500 multiplied by 2 and divided by 2. So, therefore, the depth of the seabed is calculated, which is 1500 meter. Not only this, ice is an excellent reflector of sound. So, when sound waves hit the iceberg, they get reflected very nicely and therefore, the distance of the iceberg can be found instantly. Not only this, this sonar system can be used for finding the depth of the seabed for finding underwater obstacles such as submarines and for finding the distance of the iceberg and therefore it is very useful. Now students whenever you study the chapter sound, sonar system in the answer you just cannot miss. Now let us summarize the main points of sonar system. Now here we have the first point. Sonar is an acronym for sound, navigation and ranging. Sonar measures the distance, the direction and the speed with which a body is traveling under water. Now sonar actually consists of a transmitter and a detector. Now the transmitter will transmit a sharp pulse of sound. 
The sharp pulse of sound hits the seabed and is detected by the detector. The time interval in which the sound has actually returned is found by the detector. So we can use the formula velocity is equal to 2d upon t to find the depth of the seabed.